What's going on, everybody? It is Monday, unfortunately, December 4th. We have an 11 game slate, and after taking a Sunday off, I feel invigorated and ready to play. The wife is out of town until Wednesday, so I've got nothing to do uh, but focus on this. So, 11 games is a lot. Let's get started. We've got Hornets and Magic as the first game on my list. Um, Hornets are 8-point favorites, and they are at home. They've got a 114 implied total, which is second on the night. Which is crazy, but okay. So the expectation is Kemba is playing, and we'll want to take a look at him. I think we'll also want to take a look at Nick Batum, maybe Dwight. Yeah, we're just going to want to look the whole way around. So. Kemba doesn't look the best coming back off of injury, but, you know, he's only been out one game, correct? Nope, two games. So, it's not too bad. I think I do want to take a look at Batum and MKG and Dwight. Um... Jeremy Lamb is just too expensive, I think, at 6400 on FanDuel. What is he on DK? 58. Yeah, that, that's, I don't like doing that for a guy that's not going to start. So, look at Batum first. Batum needs 27.5 to hit value. She's only done once. Um, in the last two weeks, just the first day of that span, November 20th, came sort of close on December 1st, but, hmm, I don't hate it, um, shooting guard is a little tricky, there's nothing that, like, just stands out as a negative for Batum, so I'm okay with at least marking him down, but he's not going to be a guy that I seek out. Um, Kid Gilchrist needs 26 and a half, which he's done twice in his last six. I assume that he gets a lot of steals. Let's check that out. Why am I missing him? He's a small forward and I was right the first time. Off to a great start. Okay, so now he doesn't really get a lot of steals. Yeah, I, I don't feel comfortable taking him with that usage rate. So, last one I want to look at is Dwight. He needs 37 to hit value. He uh, is coming off that lovely 9 turnover, 17 minute performance that was just oh so special on the 1st of December. But he needs 37. He's done that. Four out of his last six. Did his salary drop? Is that why he looks as like good as he does? Yeah, it did. 500 bucks. Okay. Yeah, uh, Dwight Howard's in play. For sure. That's all I really want to see from the Charlotte team. So now we'll take a look at the Magic. And this should be an okay game, oddly enough, for fantasy. Normally you're not looking at Hornets games as places to focus, but 
Magic have the 106 implied total, which is ninth out of 22, so that's not too bad. Um, we, we do want to take a look at Vooch. And at this point, we have to take a look at Aaron Gordon because he just keeps... I mean, I know that you know his most recent game wasn't amazing, but if he can score 78, then he's worth a look pretty much always. Um, we'll see if anything jumps out on Fournier and Simmons or Peyton. So right away, Aaron Gordon looks amazing. I'm locking him in right now as a short list guy. I'm even going to bold him. I don't know what that means yet, but I'm going to just pretend like it means something important moving forward. Um, it's probably not the worst game for any of these guys except for Peyton. So let's see how Fournier and Simmons have been playing. Fournier, so that's 6,300. 55 on DK, so this will be an interesting look. On FanDuel, he needs 31 and a half. He's done that in his last two. Those are the only times he's hit it. Um, but I think it's worth a look for tonight. Doesn't need to be bolded, though. Whatever that means. And then Jonathan Simmons needs 28, which he did in his last time out. Basically got it on the first... Um, and since, you know, this is where he started his starting role, so. I don't love Jonathan Simmons as much as I would like Fournier, but I, I, I have to say that I at least would take a look at him. I don't mind grabbing him if that's where my filler is. You know, we all know how great small forward is. And then Vooch... Yeah, uh, the Magic look like a re look, 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 they're in a really good spot tonight. Aaron Gordon in particular, I'm pretty interested in. Yeah, that first game is interesting. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, we're heading to Indiana. Pacers and Knicks. This Knicks team is projected to be without Tim Hardaway Jr. and without uh, Porzingis. So this line is made up right now and probably a little bit too narrow. But um, Pacers, 108.5 implied total. <laughs> Uh, we need to look at Collison, Oladipo, Thad, Boyan. We need to look at everybody. So this Knicks team is going to be not very good. <clears throat> um, Pacers, Pacers. All right. <clears throat> But every team is just another guy that I didn't add to this list. I need to start, like, preemptively doing this. Okay. Wow, they're so, the Knicks are so bad at giving up corner threes. Holy hell. I wish somebody shot more of them. They're just bad at giving up threes in general. I wish the Pacers took more threes. But... The stat sounds like a great game for Bojan. Seems like a good game for any of those first four guys, really. I don't like how much they live in the mid-range, though, so it's up in the air. What's their salary done? So Collison is at 5,900. 
So that means he needs 29 and a half. He's hit 30 in four of his last eight. Nope, four of his last seven. Um, no reason to expect the Knicks to be any good at, on D at point guard tonight. So I think Darren Collison deserves a look. Oladipo up to 9,200. Oh, boy. That's 46 he needs. And he's done it in his last three. He's done it four out of his last six. Two of those games were 60 plus. Three of those games are 50 plus. I can't do it though. And here's why. And maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe, maybe this is just his status. But you'll see this big stretch here of, I don't know, two, three weeks of games. Never more than two steals. Like it, th These are all just really normal numbers. But lately he's been going off and it's three steals, three blocks, five and two, two and four, seven and two. And that's what's been jacking his price up more than anything are high variant stats and steals and blocks so I'm going to fade Oladipo at 9200 because I think that he's too high based on stats that aren't as easily predictable every night so I don't think that it's... he obviously has the ability to go nuts his upside is as high as anybody at shooting guard but I think you're paying for a lot more um, fluky stats right now. And Boyan needs... Well, let's look at Boyan and Lance since they're both 4,500. On both sites, oddly enough. I don't know how that's possible. Um, so they both need 24, right? No. 22 and a half. Uh, Boyan's done it. I mean, he did it a couple times in a big way at the early in early November. He's been quiet lately, um, and then Lance had a stretch of hot play. I don't really like Lance here, but you know, Bojan is again. When you're trying to find these small forward guys, you just want guys that you don't hate. <laughs> the Thad needs. 28-ish. He should be getting a steady diet of like Lance Thomas or Beasley or something, so. Could be, could be a good night for the Pacers. Miles Turner, what does he need? 35. Yeah, that's not my spot. Yeah, anything really in that mid-tier for Indiana looks good. Now we'll head to the Knicks, which I don't expect anything to look good. They were playing a lot of guys that suck, which makes sense when your two best players are out. Um... Got to look at Cantor at the very least. Other than that, uh, Beasley on DK is only 3,500. So you definitely want to take a look at Beasley on DK. Um, he's an awesome punt option. Let me look at Cantor quick. What does he need? 33. Yeah, how much has his price jumped? Actually, it went down. Well, I didn't want to look at this, but I guess I have to. <clears throat> Mm. 
nothing of interest there. So I'm going to pass on anything from the Knicks. Most people should. Let's head to Philly. Uh, Philly and the Suns. Philly is the highest implied total. 119. They're uh, ten and a half point favorites at home. Right now I have Greg Monroe as the center that is out that seems to be following the rotation that they've been uh, using. But really it's... If you don't have news on it, you can't really take a center from the Suns. Um, and I'm assuming that TJ McConnell is going to play, but if not, it doesn't really change anything from a DFS perspective. He's not opening up anybody unless they come out and say, like, Nick Stauskas is going to play 30 minutes or something crazy. Okay. Why did I copy the Suns? Not enough copy. It's tough on a Monday. Okay. While he did not help me earlier this week I do think Ben Simmons looks pretty good and I want to look at Embiid as well so Simmons needs 52 didn't do that in his last one but he has been at 50 or higher 3 out of his last 6 So we'll check that out. And then Embiid, you know, same thing, needs 52. Has been there just once over 50 in his last six. So he has really slowed down. Um, what's his price been doing? Yeah, I don't. I don't see it for Embiid tonight. I'm not gonna make my list. I don't. I don't have a problem with it. He's he's not a bad play at all. So if you like Embiid, I think that that's a very reasonable play. But I think there's some better value options at center out there tonight. Um. And then I, I guess I'd be, do I need to pay attention to Covington? I don't think so. Nor Redick. So let's go to the Suns. And like I said, I have uh, Greg Monroe out. Devin Booker at 7,000. What has his salary been looking like? It's down, right? It's down a little. Well, it's up 500 here. I think that he might be an interesting play. But we shall see. Yeah, this is going to be worth entertaining. So, Devin Booker needs 35. And he's probably not in play on DK. Uh, 7,800 salary. That's really expensive for DraftKings comparatively. He's done 35 in three out of his last six. Um, two games, 47 and 52. 
Have they played at all this year? Nope. But I'm okay with this, so I definitely want to take a look at Devin Booker tonight. And let's see. I'm going to not go after TJ Warren. Slash game it concerns me a little bit with Embiid in the center. And then I guess I need to take a look at Tyler Eulis, who is 4,000, so he needs 20. And he has done that in four of his last seven. But it's sort of one of those situations where it's either an egg or he he plays up. Um, could be an interesting punt if you need one. But I think that's probably it for me from this game. Let's move on to Hawks and Nets. And the Hawks are just... Whew, they cannot catch a break. John Collins out for an extended amount of time. Deadman out. It's They're just... It's bad. You would think he needed to play Miles Plumley, but like he's still not. He, both of the Plumleys getting action due to injury. Good for them. Um, I've got the Hawks as a two-point favorite at home. The 109.75 implied total is not too shabby for them. That might be too high. Let's take a look. This is a game that uh, I would not want to watch a single second of. They're just not, um, they're not very good basketball teams. Like at all. Apparently I didn't copy this, so a little rusty this morning. God damn, stupid abbreviations. All right, so they're going to live in the mid-range. Smells pretty good for Schroeder. Let's take a look at Schroeder. That's all I really care about. 8,400, he's 42, he hasn't done that in his last six, so I'm going to fade the Hawks. To the Nets, um, you know, who cares, I think. Carroll and Rondé Hollis Jefferson are back. Um, I don't think anybody's salaries are in a really good spot. Spencer Dinwiddie needs 37. She's done three times. <sighs> okay, I'll, I'll look at it. I just don't like taking guys off of teams that suck. It's so much, like, not fun. But need to look at it to see if anything stands out. So I'll definitely be doing a live before lock tonight. And I might just stick around and do a live stream watching a game. We'll see where that goes. Okay, so it turns out I need to look at this. And I need to look at Damari Carroll, and I need to look at Spencer Dinwiddie. And I think Spencer Dinwiddie is just in. Damari Carroll needs 30. Which 
he's done one. Nope, twice. He gets pretty close. Back to Atlanta. So, I'm willing to entertain it. It's going to be a weird night. I feel like it's going to be a lot of balance 6,000-ish, guys. Um, let's head to Boston now. Celtics and Bucks. Um, Celtics are six point favorites at home 104 implied total that is 11th um, this doesn't strike me as the best fantasy game I'm judging by the, uh, the colors on my screen um, projections seem to agree take a look at Kyrie I guess well I guess I'll pull the Celtics Kind of just want to skip this game, but got to take a look. It's, it's going to be a weird night, I think, barring any weird news. I guess I'll look at Tatum and Brown, but... Uh. Tatum at 61, Brown at 58, so let's just call it 30 for both of them. Uh, Tatum has hit 30 three times in his last seven. Brown twice. Um, I don't see anything that jumps off the page as super interesting. Kyrie needing 42. I'm fine. They're just balanced. I'm, I don't see anything in Boston. Let's go to Milwaukee. He'll be the second real stud, I'd imagine. So Giannis needs 62. Which he's done. He's had two 60-point games and a 56. So he has been playing pretty well. They have the second worst implied total of the night, which is concerning. I think that Giannis is probably f a fade tonight, especially with Braun and Durant out there in better matchups. There's so much high-end talent out there that I feel like you're really trying to fit something in with Giannis. It just... It's just not the best matchup for him. So I'm not going to take a look there. I will take a look at Bledsoe, 35. He's done that. He did that in five straight. Had a little bit of an off night two nights ago. Only 29, but let me pull that shooting profile just to check. But yeah, I don't see this as a game for, for Giannis. GPP Giannis, I guess, but not not in cash. Okay, I'll take a look at Middleton too. So I'm I'm interested in Bledsoe. Middleton also seven thousand. A little bit more boom bust, and I don't see this as a game where it booms. So let's get off of Milwaukee. Head to Chicago. Bulls and Cleveland. Um, Bulls are nine point underdogs at home. They have the 19th highest implied total, which sucks. Um, Marking in at 6,100 on DK. Needs. Well, he needs 30 something 33 to hit it on FanDuel less than that on DK I don't mind that I don't imagine I'm gonna have any bulls but we'll see if anybody jumps off the page but with that implied total it's gonna be tricky I 
think Justin Holiday might be the only option. Marking in on DK as well. Justin Holiday needs 29. And he's done that once. So, fuck him. All right, no bulls. I'm sure someone will tell me one of these bulls that I should have taken uh, during the live stream tonight, and he'll do well. But I'm never right here. Now, Cleveland, on the other hand. <clears throat> Nine-point favorites. They're on the road, so that keeps the... You know, the blowout range a little tighter, which I always sort of love. <clears throat> I think it's going to be a really big LeBron night, but let's find out. All right. Definitely want to take a look at LeBron. And with the way that small forward generally looks, I'd be surprised if I didn't end up with him. Kevin Love at 8,000. What has his salary been doing? Pretty stationary lately. He could be in a decent decent spot. Needs 40. I'm going to pass there, but I don't mind it necessarily. But I think LeBron is definitely um, one of the best plays of the night, if not the best. Off to Memphis. This is just, again, it's sad. 18th highest implied total. They are underdogs at home to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, Mark Gasol is at 8,800. How has his price responded? So, I mean, he's still sort of just in his range. I would have liked that couple hundred dollars back. Needs f f 44. He's done it four out of his last seven. You know, the Timberwolves aren't exactly the best defensive team, but all they have to do is shut down Marc Gasol. So if this fits Gasol's profile, I'll like him. Um, and if not, I think I'm just going to mosey on off of uh, the Grizzlies here. It's just a sad, depressing team. I'd rather lose in fantasy than roster like Dylan Brooks. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a bummer. I feel bad for these guys. Yeah, I don't... I'm good. just want to add a usage percentage here. I'm good. I don't. Uh, nobody needs to take anybody from Memphis. Let's go to Minnesota, where we pretty much know how this shakes out. We need to take a look at everybody. And Minnesota could be in a decent spot. They are 14th in implied total, which kind of sucks. But with it being a road game, they could be in a, they could be in for a decent fantasy night.
probably it. What does Towns need? Towns needs 44. He has put up 44 no times in his last... Uh, one time in his last however the hell many games that they've played. Jesus. One, two, three, four, five. Nine games in two weeks. Oh my god, they gotta be tired. Have I changed this filter? That's so many games. Jesus, I did. Yeah, um... Look, I think Towns is worth a look, but he has not been playing very well. Has his salary moved? Yeah, he's down. This might be a good time to buy low on Carl Anthony Towns. I would imagine playing the <clears throat> Memphis Grizzlies would be uh, the cure for what ails you sometimes. Pelicans. Uh, no AD. Um, unfortunately, they are playing the Warriors. They are, in my opinion, seven-point underdogs at home. That line is not out yet. But we need to look at Rondo, <clears throat> Drew, Etom Moore, maybe Darius Miller, and Cousins. But this is going to be a t this is going to be tough sledding. I think I've used that phrase already today. Hate that shit. Yeah, this is just not a good spot for the Pels. Not when you want to have AD out. Okay. So, we do want to look at Drew. I'll peek at Boogie, but I doubt it. I could see Draymond getting Boogie tossed in the first quarter. Especially with the rate that studs have been getting tossed lately. Braun, Durant. AD. Might as well get Cousins the gate, too. We all know that he doesn't need any help. Um, yeah, let's just look at Drew. He's 67, so he needs like 33. He's done that a couple times. Three straight, actually, at one point. I'm okay with that. Rondo needs 27, and that's it, I think. Or maybe and a half. Done it in his last two. What's his price done? Oh, he's up big time. Yeah, nine hundred dollar jump. No, no thanks on Rondo after that. All right, I'll look at Darius Miller because I know people are going to be like, play Darius Miller. Thirty seven hundred, so he needs. Why can't I do the math? Like Eighteen and change. I'm. I'll take a look at it. I don't hate it tonight. It might open up some other stuff, but let's check out the Warriors. Warriors I have in with 108.5 implied total. That's probably underselling them a little bit. And uh, I believe everybody is set to play. They should have no trouble <clears throat> beating the Pelicans. Next few nights of fantasy are going to be pretty interesting. Now that I got the the old house to myself, I'll be able to really dig in. Three more games. This video is way too long right now.
Oh my god. I gotta hustle or this is gonna be an hour and no one's gonna listen to this crap. Okay, so we're gonna wanna take a look at everybody. Holy balls. Alright, so the big four are all in play. Curry at 99. So he needs 50. He's done it three times in his last couple. Be silly to say that he's not in play. Clay needs 35. I'm playing pretty well. Um, I'm going to need at least one of these guys for sure. We'll see how that fits in when we do a build. Durant needs 52. Hasn't done it at all, which is concerning. He's in play. You probably would have seen AD, so that's interesting. I think that probably opens him up. And then Draymond needs 40, which he's done two out of his last three. I'm going to assume that Draymond takes the offensive back seat. Not that he ever takes like the front seat, but you know what I mean. Those are my three for the Warriors. Most of this late stuff doesn't look very good, particularly the game after this next one. Uh, so let's look at Dallas and Denver. Dallas is uh, not good. They are two-point favorites at home. That can't be right. I don't give a shit who's hurt. Did I make this line up and type it in wrong? No, they're just two-point favorites at home. That that line's gonna swing because people are clobbering that already. Okay. Um, they played twelve guys in their last one. Nobody more than twenty-nine minutes. Um, just gonna skip them. But. There's no sense in forcing it. If I need to take a look at somebody later, I will. Looks like it's going to be the Mason Plumley show again. Potentially. He needs 29. Which he didn't get to in the last one. So maybe not. His price has jumped dramatically, it seems. I forgot what it was before. Like 4700 maybe? Uh... Plumly, Plumly, there we go. Ha! It was 47. I'm a genius. I can't remember half of this shit, or how to do basic math in my head, but I can remember what Mason Plumley's salary was two nights ago. It's weird, the things that you retain. Now that he's up to 5,800, he's in play if you want to punt at center. Um, but I don't really, I don't even need to pull this up. Well, I guess I do for the other guys. If you want to punt at center, uh, there, it, I think it's reasonable to end up on Plumley. But at his price, he's sort of where he's supposed to be now, or at least in that ballpark. So let's take a peek at Harris and Barton. Probably just Harris. Barton of the seventy-three. Did it go up again? Even up another 100 points. Yeah, no. Will Barton's price too high, guys. So it's Gary Harris and Jamal Murray. Gary Harris is 6,500. He needs 32. He's done it in his last two, in three of four, and in four of seven. So thank you. I will certainly entertain some Gary Harris. Jamal Murray, he's someone that doesn't normally pop for me. 25 and 3, so he needs 28. Had a big game in his last one out. He's done 28 twice in his last four. So the potential is there. 
Uh, there's not exactly a lot of point guard defense on the Mavs, so I will certainly take a look at Jamal Murray. Uh, Wilson Chandler is questionable, so there's no nothing you could really do here in this middle section. Um, I assume that I'm not going to look at anything for the Spurs outside of Aldridge. Everybody should be back and playing tonight. Everybody just took some rest. Spurs, 100.25 implied total, 20th on the night. This is a game where everybody is healthy. This is just simply a not good fantasy game. I don't know why I'm pulling up the Pistons first. This should be the Spurs. But I'd be crazy if I didn't look at Aldridge with some of the games that he's put up lately. Aldridge is like Aaron Gordon. I don't normally look at him, but he's been doing so much crazy shit that I at least have to give it a peek. Detroit. Yeah, and I gotta look at it again because he looks amazing. So does... Kyle Anderson, although his knee's a little wonky, so I'll probably just skip that. And it could be a decent pow punt game. Aldridge needs 42. He's done that twice. He's getting a couple days rest, which would be good for his old ass. And he'll be seeing a lot of Drummond, which is concerning. But with Aldridge's like post game and mid range game, I could see him getting Drummond into foul trouble. So I will look at Lamarcus Aldridge. I didn't spell that right. Aldridge. And I'm not gonna look into Kyle Anderson because he scares me because of his knee. Thirty one on Gasol. I'm gonna pass there, even though he did it three in a row earlier on I just don't see him being able to I think Drummond's too athletic for him alright to Detroit 96.75 implied total it is last on the night um, I'm willing to look at everybody here but I can't imagine having a piston when it, without like an injury or two, one of these guys is going to have a lot of trouble popping off the charts here. I can take a look at Avery Bradley and Drummond. Avery Bradley needs 26. He's out for me. Tobias Harris needs 32. He's done it three times in his last seven. There's better spots. And then I have to look at Drummond just because. 96. How much did his salary go up? Yeah. A lot. <laughs> Um, okay, Drummond, so that's 48. He's done it in back-to-back, -back. three of four. He's been playing really well. I got to mark him down because the Spurs don't have anyone that can match up with him, which is interesting. What's his history against the Spurs? Because it's not like they're not the same team as they were last year. By all accounts. It's never been a game for him. So that's interesting. I doubt it. I doubt it on Drummond. Let's look at this last one. Jazz and Wizards. Um, again, not the sexiest game. It is interesting. Most of those late... Like, the high ownership is going to be early, so... You'll, you should know where you stand pretty quick. 
Right now, uh, Rudy Gobert is questionable, so I'm projecting him in for ease of use. But if Gobert and Hood and Neto are all set to play, then I think all of the value has been zapped from the Jazz. I don't. I'm not going to go anywhere near them. Actually, uh, it, it doesn't even deserve a look. And then Washington, which is one I'm kind of interested in, Beal at 7,600. How much has it moved down? Okay, so he's back down here into the mid sevens after having that boost into the eights. So I do want to look at this, even though it's a shitty game, because I feel like there can be some sneak tip. Uh, Bradley Beal love tonight. Of course I copy it poorly. No, but there's going to be some Gortat love. Gortat, 4,700, needs 23. I know we had a huge game either last time out or two games ago, depending. Yeah, the last one, 41.9. Um, I am willing to take a look at Gortat as a punt. And that might be it. Let's look at Otto Porter and Beal. Beal needs 38. <clears throat> yeah. It wouldn't shock me if he went off. I'm not going there, though. Porter needs... 36. She's done three times in the last seven. <coughs> Sorry, guys. It's this stupid MCT oil coffee. As I take another giant sip. Okay, I think that's it for me. I think that's my short list, which is very short. I did load up the projections and smack the op optimizer to see what spits out so I don't really have any interest there in Kemba let me sort that by position um, or Rondo but I do like the Booker and Holiday are there Denzel Valentine was fine but I won't have him Boyan looks good <laughs> Draymond, the one uh, Grizz guy I didn't write down is is there, which isn't fun. There's no way I'd get Marquise Chris. And then we have Boogie, who I'm not really interested in. So it's going to take some manipulations. I like these better with Kerr. Yeah, with Kerr. <laughs> with Curry. Um, I think that looks a little bit better. What happens if I just pop Braun? Because while I have a couple small forwards here, you know, four of them are a little bit lower, so I think it's a good spot to lock in Braun right away. And then... If I lock Braun and Aaron Gordon, where do we got to go? Yeah, it's going to be a fun one tonight. I'm excited. I don't know what I'm going to do for a build. There's just so much out there. It's going to take a lot of tinkering all day. Okay, I think that's it for me. So, if you enjoyed this video, or even if you didn't, I would appreciate a like. Um, if you have not already, please subscribe to the channel. The growth has been awesome, um, and I'd like to keep it that way. I should be doing... This video, recap videos, live before locks,
basically the whole week. Um, if you have any interest in supporting me through Patreon, there is a link at the top that you cannot click on, but it should give you the idea of how to get there. Uh, still waiting for the monetization stuff to go through YouTube. Surprise, surprise, but I'm not too concerned there. Um, I'll uh, have updates to the projections on throughout the day. Uh, if you need anything from me, hit me up on Twitter up there. Follow me if you'd like, or on the Reddit DFS Sports section. But that's it for me right now, and I will see you guys tonight at 6.